I am Dr. Sharjil and today I would like to show you an interesting case. This 20 years old male patient presented with a history of blunt trauma to the eye resulting in traumatic cataract and vitreous prolapse. He was operated, cataract was removed, eye well implanted but vitreous was incompletely removed. So now he presented to me after two weeks post surgery with cortical sheets behind the intraocular lens I well was centered there is a peaked pupil and there is a vitreous coming from behind the iris and going in a straight line towards the phaco main wound so I diagnosed this case as a vitreous wick syndrome so what is vitreous wick syndrome when either after complicated cataract surgery or after routine cataract surgery after traumatic cataract surgery when the vitreous prolapse occurs and the vitreous uh, it uh, comes from behind the iris uh, pulls the iris uh, and goes uh, straight towards the wound and incarcerate into, into the wound so that is vitreous wick syndrome so the one cause is a traumatic cataract with vitreous prolapse but it can also occur after routine cataract surgery with unrecognized PCR or zanular damage with vitreous prolapse and adhesions to the surgical wound. But the most frequent cause of vitreous wick syndrome is after complicated cataract surgery with posterior capsular rupture and inadequate anterior vitrectomy. So positive findings in the vitreous wick are peaked pupil you can see here usually in the direction of vitreous strand irregular anterior chamber depth as vitreous is pushing the iris anteriorly posterior capsular rupture or zanular dehiscence can be noted strand of vitreous is adherent to the inner part of the phaco wound and causing microscopic wound breakdown so it's a dangerous condition there is anterior pull of this vitreous on the retina and is a risk for rigmatogenous retinal detachment the second it's a risk for end of thalmitis it can cause a severe dreadful infection third it also increases the chances of cystide macular edema so as soon as you recognize it you should ready the patient for anterior vitrectomy make sure you remove all the vitreous from the anterior chamber if uh, you are a new surgeon you should stain vitreous with triamcin alone and at the end you should put air in the anterior chamber if it uniformly fills the anterior chamber then it means there is no vitreous and also pupil will become round when there is no vitreous and there will be no resistance to the movement of the instruments intracamerally when you remove all the vitreous. You may apply one wound at the end to the main port as well. Now here if you concentrate on the video, there is a corneal slit and there is a shadow on the iris and it, you can see it's irregular because iris has got anterior pull and if you closely observe in between these two corneal and iris lines there is a transparent band like material here now it is more evident with pigments in it so that's the vitreous strand now here it is clearly evident that is going towards the wound if you closely observe now here it is evident so that's the you have see the traction on the pupil irregular pupil now here that's the strand with brownish pigment in it so its uh, diagnosis is critical and prompt surgery is the treatment of choice so i hope after watching this video you will be able to recognize vitreous wick syndrome
थैंक यू वेरी मच